because I am crazy. And I went there last October, the day when HB 56 took effect. HB 56 is worse than SB 1070. When I got to Alabama that day, thankfully, a judge issued an injunction. For, for, for a couple of weeks, teachers and principals were allowed to ask for the immigration status of their students. Und undocumented people in the state of Alabama couldn't get water service because it was, a, it, was, it was illegal, it was a crime to be an undocumented person to be in Alabama. So I ended up meeting this dude outside of a sushi restaurant, of all places, and this was really interesting. Episode with the drunk dude, it went on for about 12 minutes, and um, I kept thinking I hadn't taken karate classes since middle school. So, and I'm like, if I hit somebody, what kind of a crime is it for an illegal alien to hit somebody in Alabama? I wasn't sure. And, um, but, uh, and by the way, we had to blur his face because I didn't have a chance to like get him to sign a release form. Um, but let's really talk about that and tie it back to the hate mail, right? And let's talk about this anxiety that white people, especially conservative working class white people in the South and in the Midwest, feel. Right? And what does it have to do with the fact that in 21st century America, diversity is destiny? This is inevitable. White people right now are a shrinking share of the US population. Slightly more than a third of Americans belong to minority groups. And what's more, nearly 50% of kids under the age in America right now, under the age of 18, nearly 50% of Americans under the age of 18 are not white. Nearly 50%. Every 30 seconds, a Latino in America turns 18 and becomes an eligible voter. Again, I'm not sure if the Republicans know this. Every 30 seconds, a Latino in America turns 18 and becomes an eligible voter. And to me, this question becomes, What's going to happen about the fact that the country is only going to get browner, more Asian, gayer, because more and more people will come out of that closet, and also more and more people will come out of the undocumented closet? What's going to happen then? And you know, as somebody who's, I was just at the University of Georgia in Athens a few months ago to do a Republican event. You know, I gotta do that too, it's important. And I had a guy, the president of the College of Republicans, actually stand up and start kind of getting a little confrontational, which was fine. And at one point, I asked him, so where are you from? I'm American. No, dude, but where are you from? I'm white. White is not a country. Where are you from? I don't know. Can you like find out? And then, you know, we'll talk. Because unless you're a Native American, right, unless you're an African American who was brought here forcibly through slavery, we all came here from somewhere. And that's so important to keep in mind. It's also important to keep in mind that it wasn't until 1792 that this country actually enacted its first citizenship law. And guess what? Only white, free, land-owning white men could be citizens. 1792. 
And guess what? It wasn't until 1924 that Native Americans, the ones who could claim America, it wasn't until 1924 that Native Americans were given citizenship rights. Did you know that? I didn't know that until a few months ago. I was shocked when I found out. And to me, you know, in some ways, I'm this walking uncomfortable conversation. Um, I look like I'm Yao Ming's brother with some Jeremy Lin mixed in. My name is Jose Antonio Vargas. In college, I majored in political science and African American studies. I'm undocumented and I'm gay. I should just marry a Jew or Native American and call it a day. <laughs> and the question that I like to ask when I get asked this question of legality, right? Because that's really the number one question I get. Number one email I get from people, what part of illegal don't you understand? So it gets me to this whole idea of was it legal? I mean, again, we don't want to get all Howard Zinn on people, but like, was it legal to steal land from Native Americans and massacre them in mass genocide? We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about Thanksgiving, but you know, that's the other side. Was racial segregation legal? When white and colored water fountains in waiting rooms and restaurants and schools and public transportation were, was the norm across America? Did you know that in 1958, it was still illegal for a white American to marry a black American? In 1958. Three years later, in 1961, Barack Obama was born. Recently, about a week and a half ago, I launched a challenge um, to the New York Times and the AP to, and, the, and the Associated Press to stop using the word illegal to describe immigrants. Uh, unfortunately, there are only a small handful of newspapers in America and news organizations that have stopped doing that, among them the Miami Herald. As early as 2003, the Miami Herald have stopped referring to people as illegal. Because guess what? They have a readership in which immigration is a personal issue. When they say this person was illegal, they're talking about someone's grandmother, someone's aunt, someone's friend. And I wanted to launch this challenge, this media challenge to these organizations to really, to me, the fact that we even call people illegal alien. I was in the Univision event with Romney a couple of weeks ago in which, you know, at the University of Miami, in which he actually referred to undocumented students as illegal aliens. The fact that that term is still being used, to me, underscores the incredibly simplistic nature in which we understand and we comprehend this issue. It's so much easier to call people illegal because then you wouldn't have to talk about anything else. Their very humanity is not even in question. They're illegal. Not even supposed to be here. Get the fuck, get the hell out of my country. Well, this is my country too. I've been here since I was 12. I visited 48 states. I, I'm not allowed to see my mom, which I haven't seen since I was 12. I'm not allowed to even go to Mexico or Canada. I can chat with Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook, but I can't get a call from ICE. You know, when I came out a year and a half ago, which by the way, the last point I want to make before I open up a conversation, and I hope that we have a conversation. So I've come out twice in my life. Um, <laughs> the first time was in high school. We were watching a documentary called The Life and Times of Harvey Milk. And I was sitting in my US history class and I raised my hand up after, you know, the video was played and I told the class that blah, 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 I'm gay. My girlfriend was in third period, so she found out during brunch. Um, <laughs> and then it took me like a whole decade to come out about this other thing, um, which was harder for me to come out of. But here's where it gets interesting, right? What's out to you is like in to me. I didn't really come out. We're not really coming out. We're just letting you in. So that you know what it's like to live in this limbo. And now the question, which I originally posted from the very beginning, is how do we preach beyond the choir? How do we take immigration out of the Latino, brown, in some ways ghetto that it's been in, and unpack it and connect it to people? So here's one video that I'm gonna end this conversation with that we actually 